Hi, thanks for tuning in to Noir Histoire. I'm Natasha, and today I'll be discussing my visit to the Spelman Museum. The Spelman College Museum of Fine Art is located in Atlanta, Georgia, on the Spelman College campus. The museum features art created by black women from across the black diaspora. It's actually promoted as being the only museum in America showcasing art by women from the African diaspora. Spelman College is all women and one of the historically black colleges and universities, HBCUs in America. So it's quite fitting that the museum is housed on the Spelman campus and features art by black women. The Spelman Museum is referred to as a museum, but you should prepare yourself for the reality that it's quite small. I'm not an art aficionado, but when I think of a museum, I imagine a large building with a lot of pieces on display that would take a few hours to get through. There's a fair amount of work within the space, but it's not what I would consider a museum. At its current size, it's probably more accurately described as a gallery. This doesn't take anything away from the quality of the art or the space, but sets realistic expectations before you visit. The Spelman Museum is a beautiful space within the building that houses other offices and rooms. When you walk through the doors, you're greeted by a welcome desk with pamphlets about the art on display as well as a donation box. During the time that I visited, there was a temporary exhibit featuring the work of Amy Sherald. Sherald is notable for her portraits of African Americans and creating the official portrait of former First Lady Michelle Obama for the Smithsonian National Portrait Gallery in Washington, D.C. I don't think that I was previously aware of Sherald or her work, but I was really amazed by it. Her paintings are quite different. The artwork features black people. Many of the pieces actually feature black women in particular. She uses grayscale for flesh so the people's skin color is gray instead of being brown. I used my cell phone camera to snap the photos and I think its white balance or warm settings might have had some issues. To my eyes, the photographs added a little bit of yellow to their skin tone which made the subject's skin look brown rather than the gray that it appears in person. Many paintings by other artists have subdued backgrounds with less detail so the subject or items in the foreground stand out and catch your eye. But Cheryl's paintings feature a solid, bright, vibrant color as the background and the subject in the foreground is usually dressed in vividly colored clothing yet the subject's skin is subdued. This contrast and reversal of sorts is incredibly striking and draws the eye. It's pretty cool and different from the art that I'm used to seeing. There are light blues, reds, pinks, etc. set against a portrait subject who has gray skin, and then on top of that you have them posed with colorful dresses, jeans, and other articles of clothing. The subject's skin is quite subdued compared to the color of the canvas and of their clothing. You have all of this color around the subject, but they're quite often the darkest thing on the canvas. Their skin is gray, but there are still highlights and shadows so it's not flat and there's a lot of detail so everything looks very lifelike. There was one portrait that I thought was absolutely dope called Mama Has Made the Bread. The portrait is black and white or in this case gray and white with a bright pink background. The subject is a woman who's wearing a pair of large gold earrings that are the only bit of color aside from the background. Some of the other paintings have some colorful item of clothing but the subject in this painting is pretty much all black gray and white. The gold earrings are the only item in the foreground that has any color to it. The woman is standing in the center of the canvas with her hand on her hip in what I would describe as a jaunty pose. She's wearing a fur wrap with a patterned black and white dress, but there's so much detail in the way the dress is painted that you can see the pleats so the pattern doesn't look flat. You can imagine that there's a little hint of wind blowing or she's just moved into this position and the dress was captured in motion. The fur wrap is bad, right? And it looks so soft and smooth. It's a flat painting, but there's texture to it. Obviously, you can't touch it. And if you did, it would probably feel like paint on a canvas. But you look at it and your eye tricks you into imagining that the fur would feel so soft. The little brush strokes in the fur makes it look like the wrap is made of individual little hairs. There's even a lot of detail when you look into the subject's face. She has a short boy cut, not quite a fade, but it's really cute. And there's amazing detailing in her lips, nose, and eyes. So she looks like a real person. Look Look at the ears and their realistic folds in her earlobe. She doesn't have any legs, but she looks like she could step off the canvas. I love interesting work like that. It was, it was just amazing. The skin in all of Cheryl's paintings on display are grayscale, but somehow it didn't seem like alien and weird. It's like if someone drew with pencil, but they fully shaded in the face, hands, and any other flesh showing. The skin isn't brown like you'd expect, but the level of detail makes everyone look normal so the gray shade isn't distracting. It blends into the painting and is easy to overlook set against the solid but bright backgrounds. There's so much color and contrast in the paintings that they all pop. 
having the subjects be gray could have resulted in boring dreary paintings but there's so much energy because you have these bright backgrounds combined with the bold patterns and bright colors of the subjects clothes i thought that was really really dope amy sherrill's work really drew me in i wasn't previously aware of the artist but i'm a fan now the other side of the museum featured paintings, figurines, quilts, and a variety of pieces from other artists. Based on the layout, I assume that the permanent collection is housed on one side of the museum and they probably rotate the pieces on display, and the other side of the museum is kept for like the temporary exhibits. The Amy Sherald exhibition is on display until May 19th and is definitely worth checking out. To be clear, while I explained that the museum is small, its size is not a drawback. The recommended donation amount is $3 and parking is about another dollar. It's cheap enough to visit a few times per year to see special exhibits. For less than 5 bucks, you can visit a museum that houses some dope artwork. It's an opportunity to see art by black women, not just the artists in their permanent collection, but fresh new work every few months. If you visit during the spring and go back in the summer, half of the museum will probably consist of different pieces. That's not even taken into account that the stuff from their permanent collection probably rotates as well. Overall, I thoroughly enjoyed the experience. The artwork that was on display was breathtaking. I highly recommend visiting the museum if you have a chance, especially if it's before the end of the Amy Sherald exhibition. The art is interesting and different. The Spelman Museum is a great way to discover art that features people who might look like you and by artists who may be less well known to the mainstream. I hope you enjoyed this review and subscribe to get motivated, get inspired, and get stories of black history made and in the making. Until next time, Take care. Thanks again for tuning in, and I hope you return to watch future episodes. For more information about Noir Histoire, visit the Noir Histoire website. There you'll find text, video, and audio for each episode, all in one place. Subscribe to the Noir Histoire newsletter to get fresh content delivered straight to your email inbox. You can also subscribe to the Noir Histoire YouTube channel for videos. If you're enjoying the content but would prefer to listen to audio, you can subscribe to the Noir Histoire podcast. Follow Noir Histoire on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. Enjoy the rest of your day.